Hey everyone, I hope this video finds you well. I was challenging myself to read Julius Evola's world-renowned collection of essays, A Handbook for Right-Wing Youth, in under one hour to achieve a speedrunning world record. So I took out a can of Monster and some Benzols as preparation. While I was on my Benzo binge, I happened to come across this essay, which is very relevant given modern circumstances. It is worth summarizing in a poorly made two-minute YouTube video. The terms left and right come from the Ancien Régime French Parliament, where the monarchist would sit on the right and the opposition would sit on the left. However, this left opposition wasn't necessarily revolutionary or even radical. It was His Majesty's most loyal opposition, a rival group that could work productively with the king to solve issues that saw most use in England. Today, the term right is very vague often referring to a very diverse assortment of uh, characters broadly opposed to the left. There is a lot of confusion regarding what this word means, both in a broad and more exact sense. This complication mostly has to do with flavor of the month political commentary made by the 24-7 news cycle talking about issues which we will all forget in about two weeks. So it's necessary to put all contemporary discussion aside to get a more eternal definition of right. That is, a right wing that is hierarchical in nature, affirming ancient traditions and ordering society from above. Considering this, the right wing only acquires its full meaning when rejecting both democracy and socialism and advocating for monarchy. Or as Evola puts it, a right wing stance is necessarily anti-collectivist, anti-plebeian, and aristocratic. Its positive counterpart is thus to be found in the affirmation of the ideal of a well-structured, organic, and hierarchical state governed by a principle of authority. What is an organic state, you might ask? It is a thingy which transcends superficial governing and bureaucracy taking on a life of its own, meaning an authoritarian state that governs with the voluntary loyalty of its component parts. The organic state has good representation in Austria-Hungary. Incidentally, while I was speedrunning another book, The Habsburg Empire, A New History, I came across these lines which sum it up well. On page 16, when referring to the government of Austria-Hungary, Judson says, Here, I understand this state as far more than a discreetly defined Roma politics or a set of formal institutions separated from society. Instead, the state I discuss refers to a broad range of diverse religious, cultural, and social practices while society constitutes an equally important site for politics functions. For a single example, because I don't want this video to be too long, the internal divisions of Austria-Hungary were not arbitrary governing blocks. They were based on both familial, geographic, historical, and ethnic lines. Compare that with more recent liberal or communist governments whose internal divisions are often completely arbitrary and have no connection with the people who actually live there, like France or the Soviet Union. One can already see how the organic state is much more natural than revolutionary states. Important to note that not all monarchies are organic states, and not all organic states are monarchies. Getting back to the main subject at hand, the foundation of conservatism is a firm and continuing to propagate ancient traditions. These traditions, be they military or religious, are in place to form a good society. However, modern Canada really leaves us with nothing in the way of traditions to uphold or defend. A country which was founded on both English and French culture has been mutilated by liberals and socialists. As much as we mourn the passing of our customs, it's also necessary to look to the future. These traditions originated from very solid principles which lay at the foundation of all all traditions from all cultures. So by continuing to adhere to these principles, we can not only recover but expand on what has been lost. And explaining what these principles are is simply outside of the scope of this video. I'm just focusing on their implementation. The monarchist right always had a bedrock of traditional principles to their worldview. But how these principles express themselves varies immensely depending on the time and the place. This is how the right may conceive of progress, not as an ascent through technological development or so-called democratic liberation, but the development of a nation's culture, tradition, and heritage. Returning again to Austria, you can trace her adaptive evolution from a feudal monarchy in the Middle Ages to a modern monarchy without them ever having to abandon their traditional principles. And if it had won the Great War, it would have continued being a monarchical organic state. The last Catholic monarchy visibly and clearly undertook a huge change in their administration between 1848 and 18. 
1967 with the ascension of Franz Josef and the Hungarian Compromise. Those events gave the old monarchy new life before it was ultimately mutilated in 1918. You can see what happens to regimes when they remain static, not reforming to meet new challenges. Traditions are in place to make good people and to maintain order, but they can become legitimately repressive when they are there just to maintain order. One example would be the Prussian monarchy who failed to overcome the revolutions of 1848. What was needed at the time was a more fanatic, ideologically dedicated state. But neither the monarch nor the nobles had the will to carry it out. They preferred to bow to the tide of liberalism and Bismarck like obedient dogs. With that being said, we can clearly and concisely demonstrate what being on the right entails. Upholding and defending the ancient traditions of a given country, not statically, so as to become outmoded by the times, but actively and intelligently. Thus, what is needed today is a sort of counter-revolution. There is nothing more revolutionary in our degenerated state than returning to conservative values. I use Austria-Hungary as an example because it was the last government in European Christendom that truly adhered to traditional principles. Contrary to popular belief, it was a stable and functional government that should be aspired to. As we move into the future, a monarchy that will be able to govern becomes further estranged from what once was. The type of monarchy that will come about and how effective it will be at governing will only be what we will make of it. This video is not simply plagiarism or a diminutive form of what Evola wrote because there is value added. It's sort of like how millions of people watch Wendigoon talk about a series for two hours when they could literally just watch the series itself and get the same information. Or like how you could read 20 articles from the CBC and get the same information as you could by watching my Trucker Convoy video. Regardless, you should read the essay yourself on my legal copy of a handbook for right-wing youth. It's on page 51. Just read the whole book yourself while you're at it. Also, did I achieve the world record for a handbook for right-wing youth? No, that was a joke for the intro. Like, comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Post, Odyssey, and Gab. Thank you for your cooperation.